so, um, different style of video today, you could call it. Um, unfortunately, my original narration that I usually record with, record with Audacity alongside my Shadowplay recording um, is corrupt. I finished recording, I stopped the recording, and I exported it, and for some reason the audio was very badly, oh god, voice crack, very badly distorted. Uh, it might have recorded with the wrong microphone, but quite frankly, I couldn't be bothered to go back and do it again. So, this is not a live commentary this time. Instead, we are going to be doing uh, sort of like a post commentary. So, I'm going to try and get everything synced up with the video, so to speak. But, as we can see, aircraft today for carrier landings is the Sea Hurricane. Now, uh, I don't end up actually landing the Sea Hurricane uh, carrier in the distance over there, as you can see. I end up landing the Hellcat on the carrier. And I end up taking off and demonstrating the catapult system on the carrier as well with the Hellcat. Um, I also do a tutorial on how to get bots to take off and land on carriers in the full mission editor. And this is basically how it's going to be. So the video is about 20 minutes long. I'm probably going to cut it down less than that. But um, yeah, as you can see in the Hurricane at the minute for some reason we aren't starting up yet uh, so hang on how, how far have we got till we actually start the engine in a minute okay right so whilst we're waiting for the engine to start I just wanted to make something clear before I recorded this I recorded another version of the video and instead of using the Hellcat I ended up using the Zero the problem with the Zero is the arresting hook is on the tail wheel it's at the same level as the tail wheel so when you're coming down for a landing you have to make sure that tail hook latches. Um, you know, your tail is on the deck of the carrier, and so is your main gear when uh, to latch the hook, so to speak. Oh, there is life. We have an engine start. Um, so, there we go. Engine is running, so a takeoff is probably imminent. There we go. There's powering up. Um... I do a bit of flying around after this and just some talking, waffling, so that's what I'll do now. Um, I tried out jets before this actually and whether jets would be suitable to take off and land on a carrier. And landing, however hard they may, they may be, is possible. But the standard carriers in IL-2, uh, the catapults in the Ultra Pack uses, cannot uh, well, they haven't got the power to launch the jets off. I tried out the Fury and the um, F9F. And by the Fury, I mean the naval version of the Sabre. And neither of them were able to clear the deck. Uh, they managed... I, by the, you line it up with the catapult, and by the time I'd got off the, cat, uh, the end of the deck, I was still only doing about 100 and something miles an hour. And... Um, that is a slight problem in that the jet needs about 160, 170 minimum to take off. And the thing with the Panther is the engine overheats very quickly on Ultra Pack for some reason. Uh, probably it was like that in real life, I can imagine, as well. It was an early, uh, Jesus Christ. It was an early jet. And um, I can imagine the cooling, uh, the airflow, the cooling probably wasn't as advanced as it is today with different cooling systems. So, uh, as we can see, I'm just gaining some altitude, getting ready to turn in. This first landing that you're about to see is an example of how not to land. Um, in the... I kind of, like, collapse the undercarriage, so to speak. I, I touch down, I get latched, uh, the hook latches, but, unfortunately, the... Uh, hook latches before the main gear is on the deck of the carrier meaning that uh, basically the aircraft jumps up in the air and it jumped up to such a height that when it fell down again the undercarriage collapsed and the engine was inoperable and yeah that happened um, but fortunately for me the Hellcat did kind of go to plan when I watched the um, the bot uh, landing the Hellcat back, I was sort of, um, 
I was surprised at how the bot actually performs the landing because my idea of a landing actually no, I'll, I'll keep talking in a minute but as we can see coming in probably a little too fast there we go hook latches and as we can see aircraft comes down quite heavily but um the way that I t I land the Hellcat is get the main car undercarriage down and then latch the hook and let the aircraft jump up a bit pull back on the stick and let it just sort of fall down uh, when it's standing still the, t the tail that is so let the tail fall when the aircraft is stationary the way the bot does it which was surprising actually I never expected the bot to do this but the takeoff very similar to the way I would do it um, except the bots teleport towards the catapult with Ultrapack installed meaning that they are launched off the end of the deck uh, very quickly uh, some of you might know that in the stock version of the game uh, in the campaign uh, or other missions that you played if you were on a carrier bots would sometimes get stuck and not be able to uh, be launched off the end of the carrier so to speak they would, uh, well not stuck actually they just wouldn't have the power to get off the end of the carrier they wouldn't have the speed up so we're going to see a little scene change in a minute it goes hip, yep so now we're in the Hellcat um, probably need to put oh actually no I don't now we're in the Hellcat um, we're going back to the way the bot does it. Takeoff is as I would expect, but landing, what the bot does is it comes in at a very hot, steep angle, and the aircraft is not flat, it's sort of at an angle. So he's moving forward, he's doing about 100 miles an hour or less, and it seems like quite a rough touchdown actually, but the hook latches with one of the first wires, and you'll see this later on, and due to it latching with one of the first wires, it means that it can stop very quickly now when you see my landing attempt uh, which you, you will see here um, I stop quite a way down the deck and in my later landing attempt I stop I think even further down the deck but that's fine because I was getting myself lined up but as you can see it's bringing it in there's the main gear down and we're latched and as you can see we went flying quite a long way but needless to say we came to a standstill and there we are, we're on the deck of Le Carrier. Uh, I've forgotten what carrier this is, but eventually I'll switch over to the Yorktown, uh, which is a later carrier. I think that's 1944. But um, I just do a bit with that, and um, yeah, so basically, to la um, in the Hellcat, because of the, it's the angle that the wings are sat at, it's not, uh, um, it has a shape that's similar to that of the Corsair the ahedral and then dihedral but it's not as steep as the Corsair. You look at the Corsair and there is quite a predominant V shape, almost like an L on its side there. With the Hellcat it is slightly noticeable but it is very shallow. Um, there is nothing like that on things like the F4F, the Wildcat, but oh, as we can see uh, there's the change. We are now on the Yorktown. Um, as you can see, different deck and we have the wings folded there. Um, folding the wings is something that I would recommend doing the moment you touch down on a carrier. Because it makes moving around the carrier very easy. Um, basically, with your wings folded, you haven't got massive great big wingspan in the way. Now, certain wings fold in different ways. Some wings just fold upwards to the point where um, they... You know, they're just out of the way. If you look at the sea fire, the way the wings fold is um, the main body of the wings folds in over the cockpit and then there's little tabs, the little tips of the wings sort of fold out at the top. If you look at the swordfish, the wings actually fold inwards towards the fuselage. Um, they don't twist but they just sort of fold in towards the fuselage and stay there. Um, both wings not separately but they stay together. And then you look at some of the other jets and the wings just fold um, slightly differently. But as you can see I was having a couple of problems getting the aircraft to taxi into position as such. Because I was actually doing this run on a carrier that was moving. The runs that I was doing before the takeoffs and landings were on carriers that were stationary. And that's what I used for the bot attempt as well. Because I didn't know at the time whether the AI would be able to cope with a, a moving carrier because they would have to then guess where the carrier was at the time of landing 
and you'd have to select a waypoint that was in it. It was just pretty complicated, so I tried not to. I mean, one day I would like to see if the AI could land on a carrier that was maybe in a turn. That would be pretty interesting. Probably not. I'd probably end up crashing. but Or just, like, go around for another run. But it would be pretty interesting to see if the AI could do that. Um, so, as you can see, very close to the edge of the deck there. And when we spin the tail around, now, as you can see, very, very, very close. Now... I, now, going back to the ta uh, the landing part, the landing that I do here is very, 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 <laughs> um, it's last minute. I come in and I was expecting to go all the way around and get myself lined up, but instead the aircraft stalled and rolled, so I had then had to uh, pull out of the dive and uh, sort of just get myself lined up as quick as I can. So, chocks an important part of taking off and landing on the carrier the moment you, you want to get on the deck of a carrier you want to put your chocks in uh, or you or the moment you stop on a carrier that's when you put your chocks in but as you can see the Hellcat is now rolling and since it's a carry borne aircraft the nose comes down very quickly tail comes up and don't bother pulling back on the stick just wait until the aircraft's off the deck and then pull back on the stick you might lose a bit of altitude but gear up and you should be good to go Now. Something to mention when you're performing a landing. Get your flaps set to take off. I didn't do this in the first clip, but set your flaps to take off, get the gear down, and then lower the arrestor hook, the arresting hook, whatever, um, before setting the flaps to landing. Set the flaps to landing at the last minute, uh, well, not the last minute, but at a distance that's appropriate. But just before I go any further, as you can see, turning in. I think I stalled, I'm not sure. Yeah, as you can see, aircraft shaking quite a lot there. There's the stall I managed to pull out. And as you can see, it's a very short run, but I did actually get myself lined up pretty good here. As we can see, there goes the arresting hook. The arresting hook's down, I was just checking. Same sort of procedure for landing. I didn't think I was actually going to get a hook, but I did. And very, very close to the end of the deck there, compared to my previous landing. But it did situate me near the car the uh, catapult. Now, how do you use the catapult? Catapult is very easy to use. Uh, on Ultra Pack, you simply taxi up. Jeez, I just went my mic. You just taxi up to the catapult, uh, which is represented by that line and the grey blob there. Different carriers have different catapults. Certain carriers don't even have catapults. Um, the Yorktown, for instance, does. The earlier wooden deck carriers, things like the Lexington do not have catapults and what you want to do is when you get to the catapult put your chocks in your aircraft will be corrected if you're close enough you want to throttle all the way up let go and the catapult will launch you and as you can see towards the end of that catapult run there the tail was shaking quite a bit and that's because the aircraft built up a lot of speed very quickly it's something that you'd see if you were if you put the aircraft in a straight dive after a stall you know, um, I mean, it wouldn't gain speed that quickly, but as you can see, that's utilising the catapult. So, uh, I'm, pr I think after this bit, I just go um, into the formation editor. Yep, there we go. There's the menu, and I think for some reason the formation editor was taking quite a long time to load in. But there we go. So as you see, we were on Pearl Harbor, and there is the carrier. Now, um, I have the Yorktown selected there, it's going in a straight line, and there's my Hellcat over there. How do you set up a landing in the full mission editor? Well, so there's the Yorktown, as I see, selected, and it finishes all the way over there. For some reason it goes uh, down, like it bent down there, it wouldn't let me go any further in a straight line, so I had to go down there. Not that I was going to use it that much anyway, but as you can see, my Hellcat next to it has targeted, so to speak, the Yorktown. And um, the way you do that is by going into the object menu that you would use to place the aircraft. You want to go to Waypoint, and as you can see, I have Takeoff selected, and you need to set the target. Down at the bottom, you see Set and Clear, and you need to click Set. I need to click on the icon that represents the carrier. Now what this does 
is it basically tells the game that um, you are, so to speak, targeting this carrier for a takeoff. Um, now, it, by by default, if you didn't select landing, what um, would be selected if you targeted that would be a G attack, which I believe is a very steep dive. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but it would select a G attack, and G attacks are um, if you're expecting to be taking off from a carrier and you end up at 500 meters in a very steep dive with virtually no power on the engine, uh, I think. I don't think it's going to go particularly well. But as you can see, I'm just changing some stuff around there, set up a stationary carrier, because uh, the next bit I'm going to set up a bot mission. And what basically, what I did was... I don't think that came unplugged. No, it didn't. Good. Um, what I did was I set up a bot Hellcat, and I set it on a just a little circle around the carrier. I told it to take off, go back around and land. And um, you can do this by the same way that you would set up your player aircraft. As you can see, it's targeted the carrier. There's waypoint number one, there's waypoint number two, number three, and I end up adding another one in because um, I don't think the bot would be able to cope with those shell turns. And as we can see, it doesn't cope very well. Here there are a couple of failed attempts to go and land there. But there is the landing on the Yorktown, and we have a Hellcat set up as an AI aircraft. So, that should now cut. There we go. We can now see the Hellcat on the deck of the carrier. And it started up. And the AI should fold the wings down relatively soon. And they teleport towards the catapult, as you will see in a second. Um, in the campaign missions, they would usually just take off from the deck like so. But because there is a catapult on the carrier, and um, Ultra Pack, I think, forces it to use it. If I don't think if there if there isn't a catapult on the carrier, I think the aircraft will take off normally. But um, as you can see, we're just sitting here. The carrier is stationary this time. I, like I say, I didn't want to give the AI like too much of it to handle. But there we go. It's teleported towards the um, catapult, and very soon it will release its chocks and it will drop down a bit and it gets thrown off. As we can see, tails up. Full elevator for some reason. I'm I'm surprised the aircraft didn't stall, but um, as you can see, AI then levels out, and I just sped the footage up. It came around uh, in a very 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 wide turn. I thought it's never going to make the landing, but um, it actually flew over the carrier uh, because it starts the waypoints over again. So it does the landing waypoint, and then it does all the other waypoints. And it goes in for a nice and wide turn, actually. I'm surprised it was able to do this. It calculated itself that maybe I should go in for a wide turn if I'm supposed to be on a carrier run. And as you can see, it gets lined up. Plenty of rudder. The AI tends to use rudder to steer the aircraft into position. I would probably bank and turn in but the AI and get myself lined up and just use small rudder movements. But the AI gets half lined up, you could say. Flies diagonally towards the airfield or the carrier. There's the gear down, and as you can see, it sort of points itself in one direction, and then it'll slam on the rudder in the other direction. There you go, it levels itself out. Now watch the approach that the AI aircraft is making. Very steep, uh, very slow. I'm not actually sure how fast it was going, because my thing's hidden, but as you can see, very, very, very early on, it catches the wire, and is brought to a stop. And you might have also noticed that that was a very rough landing. Um, I don't know why the AI makes r such rough landings. I don't think, though, um, I could get a jet to take off with the AI. I could give it a go, but I reckon if I put a jet where that Hellcat is, um, the, it would probably end up in the drink somewhere. But, that's it. As you can see, AI aircraft despawns, ready for someone else to land, and there is the Yorkshire. So, before I sign off, there's just a couple of things I want to go over. Uh, or one or two, actually. What? Actually, no. I'll just go over one thing. And that's the rest of this series. So, what we're going to do... So, episode four, carriers. That's today. Episode five is going to be air-to-air -air combat. I'm going to be going over shooting down fighters, dogfighting, shooting down bombers, um, aerial gunnery, how to combat aerial gunners uh, in bombers. So, like, where the dead zones are and uh, where the blind spots in bombers are. Episode 6 is going to be ground attack, so things like 
Um, Rocket runs with the IL-2 and Torpedo runs with the um, Avenger. Uh, number seven is going to be complex aircraft management, so things like managing your trim, your RPM, your fuel mixture, your radiators, uh, magnetos on takeoff, things like that. Episode eight, jet combat. I'm going to be going over the standard jet combat in the game, so things like the YPAE versus the MiG-262, no, not the MiG, the uh, MiG-262 and the MiG-9 uh, and the lags and the um, yaks. Uh, and episodes nine and ten are going to be the two... Uh, all-purpose videos, so to speak. We're going to be going over the 19... What in the stock game would have been classed as 1946 aircraft. So things like the IL-250, the Comet, um, the IL-250, because it was... Uh, it's not a turboprop, but it's got a propeller-driven engine and a jet engine in the tail. And I do believe one engine will work without the other. And I think the prop engine works without a jet engine, but the jet engine can't work without the prop engine, which is slightly strange. So we're going to do two episodes of those, and a possible after-series sort of thing. Maybe doing some campaign missions, whether they're from the stock game, or whether I go and download them as part of mod packs. Like I say, I've only actually been able to get this install in my L2 work in my HSFX install, and my version that I play around with mods on. Both still broken. And after that, well, I'll probably do some DCS World Series, maybe Flaming Cliffs 3. I know I've been calling it Flaming Skies. I'm wrong, it's Flaming Cliffs. I'm a monkey. And then, probably, just to finish off, some um, IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad. But, second video this weekend, just to make up for the one that I didn't upload on Wednesday. That's going to be the schedule from now on. One video in the middle of the week on a Wednesday. One video at the weekend. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. ta -ra.